Welcome to the basic tutorial series for Dogspine. In this first tutorial I will show you how to add our graphics material in the editor and how to insert this in our level. We will start by clicking on a sprite menu button located in the main panel. From this moment we can create a structure to manage our GameMaker assets. Dogspine works with an initial structure located in our working directory in such a way that we can create individual packages of textures for each level, among other additions that we will see throughout this series. In this example we are going to create a structure where we will add different types of textures. In this structure we can add the different formats that GameMaker allows, such as pine files, 3D textures or simple images for tiling. We start by creating a folder where we can host our sprites. Press the Add Folder button and give it a name. From this moment we can add the amount of assets we need in that folder. In my case I have started by creating a folder where we will host the player's animations. Next I have created a folder where I will save the field of my land. Then I will do the same with the walls of my land creating another folder. Finally I will do the same with the rest of the assets. Structuring in an orderly way so as not to have to jump between menus. A sprite can contain many images. If this is the case, the panel that shows your images will be resized to show all its contents in columns. An image of this panel can be selected for its subsequent positioning in our level. Having the structure of our assets will give us later the possibility of freeing the memory of our GPU in a more comfortable way and with an automated process where we can choose at each level if we want to free memory or if it does not interest because we are going to use the same assets. Once we have our assets in the structure, we can export this for later creations. Although Darkspine already makes a copy of this structure to store a single pack together with the level that we have created. In our folders we can add or remove sprites, or directly destroy the folder. You can always re-import exported assets or update a package for future export. Let's start by creating a few objects and see how many ways to draw a low dark spine. The interaction with the environment is distributed by modes, where each mode houses different options to configure our level and objects. Our wall is like a giant scratch pad, where the transformations are executed relative to the mouse coordinates. So pressing the space key, we can jump between the creation and editing mode. This same key is used to close menus and return to the editing mode if we are running another panel. By pressing the keys A and D we can change the index of the image of our sprite. If this image is a spine file, and if its image speed is greater than zero, pressing these keys will change its animation. Pressing the keys W and S we can change our sprite for the content that has been inserted in the selected folder. For the moment, the animation created with the Spine software should contain a copy of its JSON extension, in order to be managed by the editor. For the second version of GameMaker it will be not necessary since there are new functions in it. In this example I show you how to navigate in the sprite menu with the shortcut keys already mentioned. Let me copy this object to show you the ways of drawing that the editor offers. In Darkspine, object that contains an image executes a function to draw. You can create the functions you want for that purpose by simply typing the name of the script you execute. 
But in Dark Spine we have included three ways to draw for deco objects. Deco objects are objects with a small amount of initial information for the purpose of being able to assign them logic. You can directly convert them into an object of your library when executing a level. In the inspector section we can find three methods to draw. 2D draw, 3D draw and draw vertex. The first method is the least expensive to draw, while the other two add attributes when transforming our objects. The 2D drawing can be transformed into its horizontal, vertical and dead axis. The 3D objects are drawn in local coordinates and allow the complete rotation of their axis. As you can see, making an object drawn in 3D is as easy as opening the inspector and assigning the method to use for drawing. Press the T key to move our object. By touching the crosshead icon, we can limit the transfer to one of its axes. If we press the control key while moving an object, it will be moved on its head axis. We will change the drawing method of the second row of objects. Pressing the E key, we can scale our object in the same way we move this. Pressing the R key will control the rotation. Click on the mouse and drag as if it were a scratch pad and we can rotate our object. Keeping the control key will rotate on its Y axis and keeping the shift key will rotate on its X axis. Draw vertex works in a different way. This method allows to draw a shape and give attributes, such as collisions and textures. Although the collision system is also applicable in regular objects. I leave you a clearer demonstration of differences drawing in 3D. In the following tutorial we will know the option of the room and its interface. If you like the content, subscribe and activate the bell to support this project. Thanks for watching and see you soon!